work. And I love that quote because I'm like, absolutely. I mean, if that's another thing that I want listeners to know, having been and still trying to overcome superwoman syndrome, you, you cannot do this all alone. There's no way that I could have built this business to where it is now without the help of literally dozens of people in terms of their advice, their thoughts, their ideas, their blood, sweat, and tears in some cases, you know, depending what role they play. Some people have been there with me all six years. Some just come in and out at the right time. But they're all focused on moving the business forward as I am. And clients have helped build the business and given us feedback about how we can be better, what our strengths are, you know, where we can really improve and how we deliver to them. So I think that's really important is to not try to do it all yourself because you just can't. All you end up doing is burning yourself out. Right, right. And then not only do you fail, but right. you fail, and you're, you're back to where you were at square one. Right, so and then not only have you failed yourself, you failed all the people that were counting on you to make this thing happen. Right. And sometimes, as women, you know, we find that more empowering to, to think about <laughs> the other people. And, and I know it's kind of a, a trick, but I do use that if sometimes if I'm just like, oh, my God, I cannot do this today. I'm like, Jennifer, people are counting on you. Get it done. So that sometimes does, you know, it's a motivational trick for me to think about the people who will be disappointed if I don't do what I need to do to make this happen. So how did you build that team, Jennifer? What have you been uh, Slowly. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> I'm sure slowly. Uh, it takes a long time. Um, you know, because people, their needs change, their life circumstances change. Somebody who may have worked well in the beginning doesn't necessarily work later on. You know, your business changes. You need to keep changing the resources and finding, like you mentioned earlier, what's the particular gift that, that person has? and then maximizing that. And that gift can change over time, depending on them and depending on how your business is changing. So just keeping in touch all the time with, with your, you know, your actual physical team that's working on your business and making sure that you're in, in tune with, are you meeting their needs in terms of the kind of work that you're asking them to do? And that's important because I don't think that if if somebody's frustrated and they're not enjoying their work, that we're not producing great results for clients. So I'm as concerned about my team as I am about my clients. Because ultimately, if they're happy, they're going to produce great work and the client's going to be happy and everybody's happy. <laughs> so it's a little Pollyanna, but it works. Well, but wouldn't you, wouldn't you say that um, your team is your client and big is your client to your clients? Right, right. And, you know, I have two teams. I'm going to have my team on my work team, and then I have my, my personal cheerleading team as well. <laughs> Got it. Which is a really big team. I love them. <laughs> I love all of them. But <laughs> they're the ones that pick me up off the floor when I uh, can't quite do it another day. Well, tell me a little bit about what it's like being the boss. You know, you were you're in the corporate world six years now, you are the boss. What's that role like for you coming from that switch? Well, I was the boss in corporate, so I was, I was fairly used to that, but I had a boss, although the one thing that people always think, which is a complete myth, and I'm here to blow it out of the water, if you think that you're going to get rid of your boss and do your own thing, no, you're just going to trade in your one boss for six or ten or twenty other ones none of whom know you have another one. Because the way I kind of work my business is I like to kind of think of it as, you know, like, like having multiple guys on the team. And I don't, uh, I don't let any of my clients, I try not to let them think that there's another client. Like, unless I'm totally pressed, I will not say, I can't do that because I'm meeting with another client. I simply say I'm not available at that time. Because, it, it, and again, this may be a little bit of a smoke and mirrors thing, but for me, I want them to think that they're the only client that I have. Even though they know I have other ones, I don't mention them. I stay very focused on each one when I'm with them. Right. So, so Jennifer, I'm, I'm out here. I'm sitting in the chair of corporate world, and I'm going to make – I need to make the decision. Give me three, four, or five major key points that you want to hand our audience tonight 
about the value that it is to make the leap, the risk, what it feels like to make the leap, and how you overcome, how you process that overcome, and just give them some, something to take away right now that says, if I need to make this decision tomorrow, I want to make this decision tomorrow. These are some things I can stand on that I know that have worked. I think in order to make the decision, and we talked about this a couple times, it's really important that you write down in graphic detail, and I mean graphic, I literally wrote down, I'm not kidding, the color of the chair covers I'm in my office, which I have yet to actually realize, but I'm getting there. I wrote down the color of the wood. I wrote down the kinds of people that worked in the office. I wrote down the kinds of, of life lives that they led and the challenges that they had and how we shared those life challenges together. I talked about in specific details about the clients and the kind of challenges they had and how we met those challenges. I talked about the etching on the glass door. It was in very, very graphic, specific detail. I also wrote about why, what would I lose if I didn't do that? If I kept things as a status quo and did what I was supposed to do, you know, put money in my 401k and set money aside for my daughter and the company-sponsored educational plan and did everything that society wanted me to do and was a proper responsible mother because I had a whole thing about responsibility and whether or not this was a responsible choice. And so I wrote down what it would cost me if I didn't do it. And I'll tell you, that was very motivating. Then write down the things that are holding you back, what the fears are that you think you either have to have in place or things you think are going to happen if you do this. So and basically work with what those. You, yeah, basically what you did is you drew a, uh, you drew a, wrote out a platform of three things I'm seeing here. One, you created the vision with all of the details. Mm-hmm. And secondly, you determined what price you would pay if you didn't do it. Mm-hmm. What you what it would cost you. And right. then thirdly, you talked about what you would gain once you did. Right. And so, you know, I can see that to be. And, and then and then it's just up to what. What's the very last thing you have to do? Well, I think. Then the piece, once I had gotten all that stuff out of my head, which I have to say actually took weeks because I didn't realize once I started writing how much stuff about this I had been carrying in my head. So I wrote it all down until I felt like there was nothing more I could say about it. Then, and then it was very clear, whereas in my head it was very jumbled. Then I started talking to people. I'm thinking about starting a business that looks like this, that does this kind of work and serves this kind of clients. What do you think about that? And I did that for about six months. And people started sending me resources and websites and things to read and people to talk to and, and clients. It, it just it just happens. And I think that's really important. You know, I did this also when I tried to lose weight. I said, I'm going to lose 40 pounds. And I told everybody about it so that they would know that was my plan and they would not invite me out for an ice cream sundae. So I think when I started the business, similar thing, I, was, I talked to all the people that I knew in business and asked them what they thought and got their opinions on it. And that, not only did I get great feedback, but they started sending significant resources my way. Yeah, because people people want to serve, people want to contribute, people want to, yeah, they they get empowered with that. Right, I mean, people were very excited 